welcome to the Heart Centered Entrepreneur Podcast. I want you to be rich. Yes, I want abundant financial success for your business. But I don't just care about your business making money. I care about you too. I want you to be rich in happiness, in the impact you make, in your relationships, and in how you give back. I'm Anna. I built my six-figure business as a side hustle while I was pregnant with my daughter in 2016. Now I've helped dozens of women do the same. I'm here to help you build a profitable, heart-centered, fully booked business with the latest tips on sales and visibility, with proven mindset hacks, and sneak peeks behind the scenes with what's working right now in the online space and in my business. Ready to make more money with heart? Let's go. Okay, yay. Tell me what's on your heart. What do you most want to talk about? So, I don't know. I, one of the main things, I guess, maybe like the whole relationship thing, um, like not necessarily relationships like with my husband and I and my son and I, because those are good. But I've never in my entire life, I've never been able to have like a good group of girlfriends or like a solid group of friends because I've always been like the guys girl. So I always hung out with guys, you know, cause I was into skateboarding and wrestling and hockey and, you know, now I'm a boy mom. And so, I mean, I'm, fr- I'm friends with the hockey moms, but like this summer has been really difficult. And I think maybe I'm just internalizing the things my son I guess I'm thinking because he's not getting invited to things and people are like doing things and he's not included and we're not included. Like we're not getting invited to stuff. And it's kind of like, well, is there something we're doing wrong on our end? Like, are we pushing people away? Cause we have friends for like a year or two and then people just flake and just disappear. So I've never really had, the opportunity to grow and nurture those just because people are no longer around, you know, and it's, you know, like from my end, my thoughts are, I try to like engage. I try to call and, Hey, let's go do something. I try to plan. I try to set things up and there is no, like, there's no response back. So after a few tries, I'm like, you know, I can only do so much, you know, they always say partnerships are 50, 50, but I think it's a hundred, a hundred, you know, because if you're not, if the other person's not giving their hundred, then where's their other time going to, if you're doing all the work. So, and I think that relates business wise, because at some point I'm going to have to learn how to nurture relationships, how to get into those close, you know, like building and nurturing and, and things like that. And I, I don't know if I know how to do that. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I love this question. I feel like I have heard this so often from so many women. Right. And it's so interesting that like, sometimes this doesn't come to a head and we're not motivated to address it until it's like affecting us, right? Like, oh my God, yeah. like this is affecting my son now, right? Or this is affecting my business. And I do want to figure out a way to have m- more feminine relationships with ease. I just don't know where, how to start. Right. You have come to the right place. Okay. So giving you credit for not making yourself wrong, right? Like we all have strengths and weaknesses and, but just coming with the truth of like, okay, it's important to me. And I have this desire to have more fluidity in my female, female relationships, or how would you say it? Yeah. I mean, I would definitely like to just have more of that in my life. Like I know growing up, like I said, because I was a guy's girl, I was always like, not from my point, like I was never competition. The guys that I was friends with, I was never interested in them in that way. Like my best friend growing up was a guy from elementary school all the way through college. And, but I guess on, from their end, it was weird that their boyfriend had a female best friend, you know, it was just, it was weird. And they, they were almost like, well, she's going to move in and they've been together longer, you know? And so I I guess all that mindset has come with me through the years Mm -hmm. where I try really hard not to be confrontational and not to be a threat in any way, but 
I'm a very no nonsense person. My husband and I are very no nonsense. So what you see is what you get. So we don't like a lot of fluff. We don't like a lot of like small talk. Like we like real conversations. And I don't know if maybe the people we're attracting to begin with like the fluff and like, you know, and then my husband sometimes say, he goes, people probably think that we have our shit together (laughs) and that like, we never argue, we never fight, we never anything. And they don't know. They just assume that we have it all together. And so I guess they don't want to like, I don't know. I don't know why people, I don't know if they're intimidated. I don't know if I'm pushing people away. I I don't know, but I would like to have, because I know that's important. I know having those connections, those female connections are important because there's things that I could share with a girlfriend that I can't share with my husband, no matter how close we are. We've been married for 18 years. You know, there's just some things that I can't talk to him about. And I would like to have someone that I could be open with. And right now the online space and the women I've met is the only place I have that. Yeah. So yeah, I I would like that. I love it. I agree. And I think you're so deserving of it. Right. And it's like, I almost think having those outside outlets make you and hubby even closer. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause you have like, it just strengthens it. What comes up for me is like, whenever we're trying to like manifest a certain person into our life, whether it's a partner or a therapist or a employee or a client or a girlfriend, right? Um, I think first is like getting clear on why you want it. And you've already mm-hmm. said that, right? And so I think the next is asking us, like it, we could approach this one of two ways. Number one, we can trust that like, these might sound opposite of each other, right? But like that you're enough and you're the you're perfect as you are. And so you can manifest another human without having to change who you are, you're worthy, right? Like that's one truth. So we can talk about that, right? That's a big affirmation for me. I'm constantly like, I am enough is a big, big struggle for me. A yeah. big one. Yeah. Tell me why. Tell me more. Um, I don't know. It's just always been, I'm, I'm the oldest of three. I'm the only girl in my family. My, I have two brothers and then everyone else has brothers. So, I mean, everyone else has boys. <laughs> Um, so growing up, I always had to be like, I had to be the one to go to college. I had to be the one to get a good job. I had to be the one to be the responsible one, you know, not to make mistakes, not, you know, cause I was the leader. I was the first one I was, you know, so constantly having to live up to that ideal and God bless my parents. They're wonderful. Um, but there was always in the back of my mind, a feeling of, I have to do more Or I'm not going to be accepted or I'm not going to be, you know, like I'm not going to be enough. Um, When I got married, it was the same thing. My husband and I have not arguments, but we have disagreements sometimes because I don't think I'm a good enough wife. Like I think I need to do more. And with my son, same thing. He's 11. And I'm constantly like, am I doing the right thing? Like, Mm -hmm. or am I going to mess him up when he gets older? Because I did this one thing and I should have done something else. And I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed. I have a wonderful husband who tells me how great I am all the time. And my son constantly every minute every chance he gets mommy yes buddy I love you okay no but I love you more you know so I'm I'm very blessed that I have that in my life to constantly remind me that I am good enough that I am worthy that you know God has placed these people in my life Mm -hmm. for a purpose and that you know I didn't have to do anything just the simple fact that I'm here these people have been placed into my life to be blessings to me and for me to be blessings to them. So, you know, that's, that's always been, I even thought about getting a tattoo of I am enough with a sunflower. I just haven't done it yet. I I love that so much. And let's like play with this first side for a second. Okay. I love that idea of you, like even the affirmation you said, God places the right people in my life at the right time. Mm -hmm. And I am enough and I am worthy just as I am. So I think really playing with that as you manifest some deep female friendships, which female friendships, like I think about it just like regular dating, right? Like it starts like, Hey, do you want to meet at the park once? Do you want to go on a coffee date? Right. And then if it goes good, you're like, do you want to go on another coffee date? Right. Right. goes good. Okay. Do you want to do another, like just letting it build over time. Right. Mm -hmm. 
And I love that idea of just affirming for yourself. And maybe even if you, even if you don't get a tattoo, like maybe putting it on a sticky note on your computer, Mm -hmm. the I am worthy, I'm enough. God will place the right girlfriends in my path at the right time. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to meet them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I have a few of those on my phone, on my note cards. I'm like looking for like, anytime I see anything that says I am enough, I'm like, I have to buy that. I'll put it in my Amazon cart. So yeah, that's, yeah. I like that. I like that. And I'll add the, the, um, the, the God's place people in my life, you know, and, and, you know, God will place the right women in my life for friendships. And I'm exactly where I need to be exactly who I need to be. And, the right people are there just waiting for me to find them or they're looking for me. Yes. They want me too, right? Yeah. I love that idea too. Of you asking yourself the question, if I believed I was enough, how would I be acting? Right. Mm -hmm. If I believed I was enough, I wouldn't have to ask for that affirmation. Right. If I believed I was enough, like how can I act as if I am worthy. I am enough. What would that look like? Right. Which like brings me to the second half of the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Half of the conversation is just like knowing that we're worthy of good things as we are. I think about this as we like want to attract clients, right? Like, or a partner, you know, people say like, oh, I need to work on myself more before I can date. Right. But like, we're always going to be working on ourselves. right? Right. So like, how can we believe that? Like we can manifest that thing now as we are. And the other truth of it is like, how do we keep improving ourselves? Right? right. So there's part A. Are you ready for part B? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think part B would be really fun to look at. Like, like you said, like, who did you have to be growing up and honoring that version of you and being like, thank you for being that because you had to be to survive to be right. Wrong, right. Yeah. And not making yourself wrong and honoring, maybe even writing that version of you a letter and thanking her for who she had to be. But also reminding you that like you're in a different place now and you're right. safe and you can maybe let go of a little bit of that, like proving, accomplishing, achieving energy. If you're wanting to attract, I really think attracting female friendships is like attracting a partner or attracting whatever. There's going to be polarity, right? Mm-hmm. So really looking at, if you're looking for these girlfriends that are going to initiate with you more and invite you to things and organize and include you then you're probably going to have to step back that energy a little bit of the pursuing, right? What are your thoughts on all that? I like that. I've, I've been trying to work more on the feminine energy and the receiving and the just accepting. Um, I've always been very masculine energy, like doing, doing, doing. Um, so I, I have been working on, on, you know, like being more grateful, having more gratitude, I'm a great, more of a grateful heart, more of letting other people plan other people take the wheel and per se and, and do things. So, yeah, I, I really like that of, you know, just sitting back and, receiving what other people have to give. What most intimidates you about a female friendship where the friend is organizing and planning or taking a little bit of charge and control? Um, nothing really. I mean, I would, (laughs) I would actually love if someone else took the lead. Um, yeah, I I would actually love, I've, I've taken the lead for so long. I don't know what it feels like to have someone else take it. Um, so I would, I would love it if, if someone else took the lead and said, Hey, we're going to do this. Okay. Okay. Great. Let's see what that's okay, like. so there, there's absolutely nothing that intimidating about that. Or like uh, the, uh, every bone in your body is like, that would be awesome. Well, yes. But then I would be in the back of my mind. I would be like, what if I don't like what they're doing? Uh huh. Or like, what if it's not like, I remember a group of, of girlfriends, one of the girls, the hockey moms set up a time to go to a place down here in Florida called the Dallas bull. And I don't like country music. I don't like country dancing. I don't like, and so I was going to go. And then at the last minute I pulled out and I'm glad I did because they were up to like 4am and I had to go to work the next day. Um, but things like that, like, doing things that I don't enjoy because I'm not a very, like, I'm not good at putting on a mask. So if I'm not having a good time, I don't want other people to not have a good time because I'm not Mm -hmm. having a good time. So I just pull myself from the situation and allow others 
to have a good time. Okay. This is so, I'm glad you gave this example, right? (laughs) Because I, I hear what you're saying. Right. But I think it's also like maybe a little bit of caretaking around, like, Mm -hmm. I, I, I need to always be this perfect, having fun for people to like me. Like what if you went and you had a little bit of fun, but also you were a little bit irritated and stood in the back of the, who cares? Like, it's okay for you to be who you are. Like maybe you go catch a concert with someone and you're like, I don't really like the music. That's okay. They can still like the music. So I think it's just like allowing a little bit of your humanity and trusting that the women that you're going to friendship date, they're grown ass (laughs) women, right? Like you don't have to baby them. Like if they invite you to do something outside of your comfort zone, number one, go do it. Like just try, right? Yeah. (laughs) And if you don't like it, either keep it to yourself or say something, but like, you don't have to be a robot. Like that's part of the dating friendship is seeing how it works. Maybe you go and it doesn't work, but maybe you go and you do like it. Right. So I think maybe in this next phase, like when someone initiates with you saying yes and just trying and just allowing yourself to be a little out of control, a little bit vulnerable. What are your thoughts there? Yeah. I like that because it's, it's also allowing me to say the situation isn't what's important. It's building and fostering the the friendship. So if they invited me, I may not like what we're doing, but I like the company. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, that was so good. That was so good. It's kind of like with my kids, right? To be honest, I don't love seeing all my kids' performances, but you bet I go to every damn one because I want them to know I'm there for them, right? Right. (laughs) So I think like, that's okay, right? And then long-term, obviously, if if you hate country music and someone's obsessed with country music, maybe it won't be a long-term match, but maybe it will. Right. Right. And it's like, you don't know. I always tell myself I'm doing romantic dating right now. So that's my lens. Right. I always try. There's like two things that make a good match. Right. Or one main thing, obviously like a little bit of like chemistry, like Mm -hmm. personality, but also value alignment. Right. And honestly, that just takes time. So I would go on like two friendship dates with someone before you make any judgments, like go to the annoying concert, do like, don't, um, betray yourself. Like maybe you go and you leave at midnight cause you need to get to bed. Like you can still be you, but I say like, take a little bit more risks. What are your thoughts? I like that. I'm not a big risk taker. So that would definitely be something that I would be, I'd be willing to do because friendship, friendship dating seems to me to be a little bit different than dating, dating, you know? Like I I tell my husband all the time, I'm like, I can't imagine what dating would be like now because we've been together for so long. We've been together for 20 years and we met in middle school. So we were together in middle school too. So I just, yeah, I would, I would, I, I, I think that, I think that's a safe space for me to take a risk if I'm in the mindset of that's what I'm doing. Like I'm learning from someone new versus the mindset I've had of, it's one and like one and done kind of thing. Like it's either all or nothing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that would be a really good idea for me to jump in and, and uh, be a little bit more risky with what I do and what I accept understanding that it's just an invitation. Yes. And it doesn't obligate you to anything long-term just because you go to one country thing doesn't mean you're promising to be her bestie forever. Like you're just saying like, yeah, I'll go to one thing with you. Right. And I think like every person you date, you learn something from, right? You learn more about what you like and what you don't like. And I think like, it's so beautiful that you have such a solid relationship with your hubby because he is your home base. So you can Mm -hmm. have a little bit more of vulnerability and it's just going to be fun to play with. Like it, it is a little bit of lack of control and it is a little bit of like, will I look silly or like, yeah. but just being like, that's if relationships are vulnerable, you know, yeah. but that's also the beauty. Yeah. And I think too, my things, my hangups been, I don't, I've not, I've never really been vulnerable with anyone. So I kind of like have that facade of having it all together because I don't want people to really see me yeah. as like, you know, broken and and needing help and stuff. So that would be something that I would really need to be vulnerable with. Cause I know people 
people respond to that. People respond to the vulnerability and, you know, like, yeah, me too. I'm, I'm in the same boat kind of thing. Yeah. So I think that would help too, to just open up a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, just a little more. And it might be as simple. It doesn't mean you have to tell them like your like lifelong story. It could just mean like, I didn't really like these chicken tenders. Right. Or yeah. like, you know, like just being honest or like you guys, actually, I'm going to go to bed at midnight because I'm really tired. Right. Like, yeah. Just telling your truth, right, um, in the moment, I think is powerful. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can, <gasps> I can, I can jump in and do that. Yeah, yes, I love yeah. it so much. Um, I also think about it too that it's almost like a funnel, right? Like for me, dating right now, um, I don't make it wrong when I'm dating different guys and they don't all work out. Right. right. So like I'm dating different guys and sometimes the guy will tell me like, I'm not feeling it. Or sometimes I'll tell the guy, like, I'm not feeling you. Right. And right. girl friendships is the same thing. And so like, let's say you challenge yourself in the next two months to hang out with five different women, either maybe mm -hmm. they'll invite you, maybe you'll invite them. Right. But five new women you're going to like hang out with. Right. Probably four out of those five aren't going to be a fit. It's fine. Right. right. And so don't feel bad if they don't reinvite you or you don't, because the point is that you don't have a hundred best friends. We're just looking for like two really great females. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think just starting to put yourself out there and not make it wrong that not everyone's a fit. What are your thoughts there? Yeah. I like that. I like that because ironically, I tell my son the same thing, mm -hmm. um, but I don't listen to it. Uh, and my son's very, you know, uh, he's like, mommy, I have, I have friends. I, you know, it, I, I'm good. I, I have, you know, even though they don't invite me and I don't go places, I have friends. I'm okay. And so I just need to stay in that mindset of, you know, it's okay. You know, I, I have the people that I can go to when I need, you know, when I need support and I know who they are and, you know, this is just for fun and just for meeting new people and seeing what fits, what's new, what's coming up. And yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. And these women are going to be so lucky to have you. I think it's going to bring out a new part in you, not just in the female friendships, but I think in your marriage and your motherhood, I do think yeah. that like, like we talked about, it wasn't safe for you to have that feminine energy growing up, mm -hmm. but now it is. And so really playing with like, it's a little new, but it's going to feel really fun to be loved and taken care of and invited and pursued. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you've had a lot to do with that. I'm going to tell you that. Yeah. Your, your posts and your podcasts and just everything that you share and you say just have helped me to realize that I need to open up more and be more like, you know, heart centered and more, you know, willing to receive and, but willing to give just as much as I receive and just mm -hmm. being happy with where I am and content with where I am and realizing that, like you said, I am enough. I don't need to change anything about myself. I, I just need to be better for myself and not for anyone else's benefit because I'm exactly what, when you know, what people need, the people that need what I have are out there and I don't need to change who I am to attract that. Mm -hmm. So thank you. You've yeah, been like, like I was honor. so excited for this. I was like, oh my God, I get to talk to her. <laughs> I'm so glad. I love that. Some affirmations that were coming up for me as you were saying that besides the, like, I love the one you said, which is like, God will place the right people in front of me at the right time. It's just like with the right women, I can't screw it up. I have this belief with clients too, right? We always think like, I want to say the right thing, but like with the right potential client, we can't screw it up. Like if we do right. say something wrong, we would apologize, right? Like, right, right. but also with the wrong potential client, there's nothing we could say to get it right. With, right. The, with the wrong friend, anything we say is going to be the wrong thing, right? right. Yeah. So I think it's just really trusting, like it, it puts a little ease around like needing to be perfect or what if you were too vulnerable or what if you were not vulnerable enough, right? Like yeah. as you're learning to be vulnerable, you're going to make some mistakes, right? You're going to be like, Ooh, that was a little too much, right? Yeah. But like, that's okay because with the right friends, you know, I've even had to apologize to a client before and they were fine. Like, with the right humans, it's okay for us to be imperfect. Cause we, one of my favorite sayings from my coach, Lacey is I don't always get it right, but I make it right. Right. At That's the end. Good. So knowing that we're not going to be perfect, but we know how to make amends for things. So I right. think just really keeping that energy and then having your action step be 
five to six dates, friendship dates over the next two months. Okay. Some might initiate with you. You might initiate with them, but just really starting to get in the practice of trying. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. And just being more vulnerable too. Yeah. 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 Just opening up a little bit more. I'm kind of clo- closeted. I'm, I, yeah. yeah. Opening up more. I think the more I open up and it's funny because this online space has been really great for me because I've been able to open up without the judgment you know, that I feel. Mm -hmm. And so the more I open up, the better I feel and the more and the less heaviness there is because I'm sharing those parts of myself with other people. Mm -hmm. So that's been, that's been really great. Mm -hmm. And that's helped me, you know, business-wise too, just opening up more and having more space to focus on the things that I want to do versus the things that I've done in the past that haven't worked out. So that's, that's really been, that's really been great for me. So that's so beautiful. Something I like to play with too, is just practically like when you are hanging out with a woman is like really seeing if there's like that even exchange, right? Mm -hmm. So like how much am I talking versus how much are they talking? Right. Am I, am I talking too much? And do I need to like, listen more and receive or, or they do, or do I need to talk more? Like, is there that balance? Are they being more like, do I need to be more vulnerable or do I need to be like just really looking at what's that play and exchange and keeping it in balance? Just like a regular date. Just like a regular (laughs) date. I swear it is. See, you didn't have to really do dating as an adult. (laughs) Now you do. Now I do. And I I get to do date. You may even follow some like dating influencers on Instagram. That's what I encourage a lot of my clients to do that are working on female friendships because it Mm -hmm. honestly is the same thing. It is. Yeah. It is. And it applies to client stuff too. And just really playing with, it is vulnerable work, but it is so worth it. It is so worth it because those female friendships you gain are going to be so lucky to have you. You have such a beautiful heart and you are going to learn so much from them too. Yeah. I'm always, I, I, my parents have always been um, telling me that everybody comes through your life for a season and for Mm -hmm. a reason. So whether they stay because they're teaching you something positive or they're teaching you something negative, they're always teaching you something. You learn something from everyone. So I love that. Yeah. I I think that's so true. Something I try to do too, is I try to get attached to, I ask God like, okay, God, I always want strong female friendships, but I try to hold a little loosely who they are or how long they're in my life. I've had some friends like be really close to me for like three years. And then we've kind of like drifted apart and I've allowed Mm -hmm. it. And then we got really close again a few years later. And I think a lot of times people get so attached to one friendship, but it's remembering that like God can bring us female friendship a lot of times it can last, but it's okay if it ebbs and flows. Maybe someone has a baby or someone like being a t- same thing with clients. Like I'm attached to being fully booked with clients and making a ton of money, but I'm not attached to who the client is. Right. Right. It's just the it's just making sure you're booked. The 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 bodies that are there. It's not. Yeah. It's it's yeah. not relevant who in specific it is. Just as that that there is that there will be. And that makes the friendship last longer because I think if there's too much attachment, the person can need space, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Which sounds so weird, but the more detached you are from the friendship lasting forever, the longer it lasts, right? Yeah. Because you allow that ebb and flow, right? And so not that we shouldn't put in the effort, but it's just trusting that like, okay, I'm going to have good female friendships for forever, but some of them might ebb and flow a little bit. And that, that's why it's kind of fun to have like three female friendships, Right. Because then it's okay if someone, and if someone does distance themselves, we don't make it wrong. Like that's because I'm a bad friend or I'm a horrible person. I have to, no, maybe they just got busy or maybe they got food poisoning. Right. Or like, yeah, like not taking it personal. Yeah. That's, I've got to work on not taking it personal. That's a definite one that I've got to, that I've got to look at and not take it because life happens. We, I've done it. You know, I've been the friend that's kind of backed off because yes. life has happened and it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and never thought about it that you way. Drift, it's easy to come back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I never thought about it that way. I do it on my end. I never thought of, you know, the other end of it. So yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. And it might hurt a little bit, like you're human, it can hurt, but I just think it's being careful of what we making, we can mean. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Tell me what you're most taking from session today. What's standing out to you as you wrap up? Um, definitely, definitely that the right people, like I can't mess it up with the right people. Like I can't mess it up with the right client. I can't mess it up with the right friend. If they're the right person for me, um, you know, if God's put them in my path for the right reason, I can't mess it up. Whether we drift, whether we're close, um, I there's nothing I can do to stop that relationship or that that relationship, you know, from happening, whether it's a business, a friendship, whatever it is, there's nothing I can do to screw that up. Yeah. That's that's, you know, really the the thing that that's really coming coming up for me. That it, it's, you know, it's it's there for me. It's just a matter of me finding it or them finding me. So that yeah. is so beautiful. I cannot wait to have you go on friend dates and try things <laughs> that you've never done before. That's one thing I love about dating too, is like I, someone took me rock climbing. Someone took me paddle boarding, like things that I honestly like aren't necessarily my thing, but like we get to try it. Right. Yeah. Like that's the thing. Check we get it off to, your bucket list. We get to know new humans and their likes and dislikes. And so it just gets to be like, okay, I'm along for the ride. Here we go. I might love or hate this. Right. Yep. Yep. Definitely. I can do that. Get to go see some country music that you hate. Like why yeah. not? Just bring some earplugs, right? Yeah. I'll prepare myself. Prepare, I'll prepare yourself. Myself. <laughs> I'll mentally prepare and myself. I always say on dates, I either have a great time or have a funny story. So, you know, that's a great mindset. I like that. I like that. I, we tell our son, it's like when he plays hockey, when you lose, it's like, you don't lose. You either win or you learn. So oh. I either have a good time or I learn what I don't like. <laughs> what a good mama you are too. And I think this is really gonna, it's such, this is the most important work you can do for your son is learning this yourself, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Cause I definitely don't wanna pass this on yeah. to him to constantly be like, you know, cause right now he's fine with the friendships that he has and the time that he spends or doesn't spend. He's not like, you know, moping. And I'm the one feeling bad that he doesn't have anything going on over the summer. Cause he's an only child. And I'm just like, um, but you know, I'm like, I don't want to manifest that for him. I'm, he's happy. He's, he's you know, fine. yeah, he's it's all fine. good. It's all good. So yeah. So thank you. Thank you. You are a gem. I hope you have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye Anna. Thanks for hanging out today. Please hit that subscribe button so you can make sure to stay updated anytime a new episode drops. And I would love for you to join me in my free Facebook community. It's called The Heart-Centered Entrepreneur. We discuss the podcast episodes. I regularly go live and do free trainings. And you may even meet your newest biz bestie. So you can join at heartcenteredcommunity.com. It's absolutely free. And I cannot wait to see you in there.